This happens to be a Super Lori Leopard Ball Python, and certainly it was one of the highlights of my production last year, right? We ended up hatching three Super Lori Leopards from one clutch of 12 eggs. And what it is is it's actually the super version of the Lori Ball Python, and then the incomplete dominant Leopard Ball Python combined, right? So it's pretty amazing. They hatch out blue and silver, and even at a year old, although they've changed a little bit of the color, they're still absolutely spectacular. I mean, look at how amazing that is. Well, guess what? Today, we're about to find out if we're gonna produce more. And this happens to be the mom, which is actually a Lori Leopard Ball Python. So again, the Lori and the Leopard are incomplete dominant animals. And you can see the Leopard just makes a different pattern to this as far as a normal Lori Ball Python. Now the Lori Ball Python is definitely lacking some of that yellow pigment. Almost looks azanthic-y really, but it's not an actual azanthic. And it does brown out a little bit when it gets a little bit older. There's no doubt you can tell that that blue and silver has changed even in the Super Lori Leopard. Now again, when you're getting into incomplete dominant animals, you have a one in four shot to produce a super version, which would be, of course, a super lorry. Now with the leopard, it's a 50% odds of actually producing a leopard ball python, right? So when you combine the two with the super lorry and then potentially the leopard, you're basically looking on average about one in six eggs, right? Now you gotta remember, that's on average, so that you could have a thousand eggs and you could produce one super lorry leopard, or you could have four eggs and produce all four super lorry leopards. On average, over the course of millions of eggs, you would get about a one in six odds. So we have 11 eggs right now from this mama this year. Let's go ahead and cut them and see if we get lucky and produce some Super Lori Leopards. So definitely one of the most anticipated clutches of the year for me because obviously the Super Lori Leopard Ball Pythons are always such a giant hit. And like I had mentioned before, there's a one in six odds. We have 11 eggs. So theoretically, if we get lucky, we'll get two Super Lori Leopards. Keeping in mind, last year we got three. So who knows what's going to happen? 11 eggs. Uh, let's jump in, say a little uh, prayer to the odds gods, and let's nail this one. First egg. Oh, let's just get a Super Lori Leopard right off the rip just so I can stop being nervous. Because I tell you what, I am nervous right now. There's no doubt about it. And, well, wait a second. What do we got? I can't see yet. I can't see yet. We definitely have a Super Lori. And it looks like a Super Lori Leopard right off the rip, guys. First egg, we nailed it. That's right. Super Lori Leopard on the very first egg. Oh my gosh, that is some good eyes. We still have 10 eggs to go. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna start saying, can we get three now? Can we get three now? But the truth is, I'm super happy that we just even got one because there's always a chance that you might not get any, right? With the one in six odds, you never really know what's gonna happen. So let's go ahead, jump into egg number two and hope the odds gods are in our favor. Oh my goodness, two would be nice. But one is amazing. Don't get me wrong, one is amazing. Okay, so it looks like we have a little Lori Leopard Ball Python, which is great. I mean, the, the building blocks, right? The mom is a Lori Leopard, so that's important. So uh, let's just keep on going. Now keep in mind, we could get Super Loris without Leopards too, which would be really cool too. And that's only a one in four shot to get a Super Lori, but no, let's not do that. Let's just go ahead and get another Super Lori Leopard. You know what I'm saying? Holy moly, there is something, oh my gosh. Super Lori Leopard number two. So we've got two and we still have eight eggs to go, people. This is absolutely amazing. I, oh my gosh. You know, sometimes you really want the odds hit. Some, well, you always want the odds hit, but there's certain clutches you're like, please let the odds hit. So we have two so far, eight eggs to go. So this egg is a little bit wonky. It has a little bit of a wet spot on it, but I'm not worried because these guys are ready to hatch. So it should be completely fine. Looks like we have a nice little Lori Ball Python. No uh, Lori Leopard. So, so far we have a Lori, a Lori Leopard, and two Super Lori Leopards. Wow. All right, let's keep going. We gotta get at least one more Super Lori Leopard. I know I'm being greedy, guys. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't stop it. I can't stop it. Okay, we got another, what looks to be a Lori Leopard, which is good. Again, Lori Leopards are great. Again, not only for producing Super Lori Leopards, but bringing them into other things to get other Lori projects as well. So uh, we've got lots in the docket, trust me. Let's keep moving on to the next egg. Again, we haven't produced a Super Lori yet. Only the Leopard. What do we got here? What do we got here? Oh, another Lori Leopard. So we're doing really good on the Lori Leopard front. I gotta be honest with you. And I'm not complaining about that at all because that's a super cool combination as well. We still have five eggs to go. I tell you what, guys, I am stoked. I'm so glad we got those Super Lori Leopards out in the beginning so I can take that kind of anxiety away. Another Lori Leopard. Wow, we're really crushing on the Lori Leopard because again, if I was on the back end and I only had three eggs left to cut and I had no Super Lori Leopards, I'd be freaking out. But we still have four eggs to go, so come on, just one more Super Lori Leopard. And if I get one more Super Lori Leopard, I'm gonna say, okay, one more after that. <laughs> the truth is I'm happy with whatever I get. I'm just feeling really lucky. This looks like just a normal ball python. So the first normal that we produce out of the clutch, we've got three eggs to go. We're gonna get lucky, come on, one more, come on. Okay, here we go. One more, please, come on. 
You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Looks like another Lori, possibly a Lori Leopard. Probably, yeah, looks like a Lori Leopard there. Definitely Lori Leopard. Whew, getting out to our last couple eggs, guys. But we did good so far, but we got two eggs to go. Oh my gosh, I would love to just end with one more Super Lori Leopard. Ugh. Nope, we got another Lori Leopard though. We're doing really good on the Lori Leopard front. And again, they're cool building blocks. I mean, it's, it's great to have the genetic. One last egg. Let's end this with the Super Lori Leopard, please. I mean, would that be an amazing, I'd be over the moon. I'm over the moon either way, but this would be amazing. Let's do it. Come on, Super Lori Leopard. Come on, Super Lori Leopard. Come on, Super Lori Leopard. Nope. Another Lori Ball Python. Ha, yep, just a Lori Ball Python. But hey, listen, we had two Super Lori Leopards in the first like three eggs, so we did really good. So can't wait till these little buggers crawl out of the egg. That's absolutely amazing. And uh, hey, what a way to start the day. An albino het lavender snow to a male lavender snow. So we've got quite a mix in here. Uh, these guys are so cool because there's such a variance. So that lavender snow go all the way from lighter, like almost a pinkish color, to a deeper, darker lavender and it looks like we've got a pretty good variance in this litter here uh, to we've got pattern lists some that have pattern more purple and more pink so uh, this is really cool I am really happy with this just love these and one of the cool things too is so some of these are gonna be snows but some are gonna be like those ruby eye lavenders which actually right here I can already tell they've got that deep dark eye on them and uh, they're just they're just beautiful one of my favorites that deep dark lavender is definitely a favorite of mine and when you put that ruby eye in it um there's something pretty special i think so this is a really good class of course salt here is getting absolutely enormous and that's one of our biggest issues right i've been working on her about going onto the ground and she's doing pretty well i can set her on the ground and she might walk for a minute and then she just kind of settles down now the good news is is that i can pet her like this no problem you can touch her tail she has no problem touch her feet do whatever you want to do and this is the thing i'm trying to train her to the point where she can go like this because obviously she's getting to the point where she's getting harder to hold for littler kids right but at the same time we have to keep it really docile so that there's no way that it'll ever bite so the idea is, is to continue sen to sensitize her mouth but you can see what will happen as soon as I do this that's what we don't want to have happen right we certainly don't want her to be biting at somebody but you can see after that first time I'm a little bit better off and I have to just kind of continue to desensitize those ISOs because as soon as you touch them, alligators are kind of set up to the point where they actually will bite as soon as they feel any kind of pressure on those ISOs. Of course, in the wild, if a fish or a bird comes by, they got to snap immediately, right? So we have to just keep working on her and she's getting a little bit better. You can see I can kind of touch her a little bit. This is always about more and more desensitization. You can see her mouth is open, but she's not snapping as much now, right? So I have to get her to the point where it's bulletproof, where there's no way she'll ever snap at anyone. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to ever put salt on the ground and let anyone touch her face, but you, accidents do happen, right? If she's on the ground, she's six foot long, and maybe someone comes by and I just like, oh my God, quick, right? So we have to get it to the point where she doesn't do this, and that only thing we could do is just continue to touch and touch and touch and desensitize. I'm gonna probably reach out to my buddy Chris Gillette and get some kind of tips because she's so good at training crocodilians because I want her to be fine. You can see, you can pretty much touch her anywhere. I can touch her here, I can touch her here, and she's fine, but it's only when I touch those ISOs on her face that she gets a little wonky. But other than that, like I said, you can come back here and you can pet her all day long. So as long as you're in the back, no problem at all. She's completely fine, right? So this is just a work in progress that I have to do because again, although right now I can pick her up and she's absolutely a puppy dog and it's really great to hold, when she's 100 pounds like RJ, that's not gonna happen, right? So working, working, working. Hopefully we can get her super tame even with that mouth area so she doesn't have that reaction bite, right? So uh, just continue work in progress. We're actually gonna take our snow, snow red-eared slider Voldemort and bring him over to the Raptorium. Him and Chopstick used to live together over at BHP while we were raising them up. He, and then Chopstick's got a little too big for that cage. Brought him over here so everybody could see him enjoy him just like we do. So today we're gonna clean up this cage, make it look a little nicer, and then bring him over and they can be friends again. Let's do it.
All right, so now that Voldemort's over here, let's go to the other side and see what he looks like. And look at it, guys. He dove right into the water, checking things out. I don't know where Chop... Oh, so Chopsticks is out there. So Chopsticks is still just a little bit bigger than he is. So hopefully we'll keep an eye on him and uh, hopefully all goes well and we won't have any problems. And now you guys can see Voldemort at the Rectarium. The guy Bowser here certainly is pretty darn amazing. There's no doubt about that. And we've talked about this enclosure so many times, doing something different. We talked about maybe putting the Fly Rivers in it, but now to be honest with you, I think I'm gonna put the Fly Rivers probably upstairs when we do the aquarium, but I'm not sure. The point is that this was a centerpiece when people walk in, but you gotta remember, people aren't gonna be walking in, in the same spot. So what I'm thinking about doing is maybe if this pond is lit differently, it'll actually make Bowser pop a little bit more, right? So a project I'm gonna work on in the next couple weeks is somehow how to get light down in here that can light this whole thing up so people can actually see Bowser and then we'll give it a go and hopefully that is. And then I gotta find something else to put in here but I just don't know what it is because he kills all the fish except for Jonah of course. And I'm afraid to put common snapping turtles which will live with the alligator snapping turtles but what if he kills them? I don't wanna do that so I'm a little bit stuck here so I think the next project I'm gonna do here in the next week or two is gonna actually do something that just completely lights this pond up. Super excited I got my buddy Jason and I've known for many years in the house, his son, Cannon. Cannon, what's going on? You hey. brought us a gift, didn't you? All right, well, I don't know what these are. They look like giant muffins. So Jason has an amazing restaurant, a couple restaurants, Playground, Playground 2.0. I'll put a link in the description out in the Anaheim area. Yes, yeah, we got a bagel shop now too. You got a bagel Ooh. shop yeah, too? Yeah, yeah, it's called Dough Exchange. And um, oh, that's I realized smart. in the pandemic that bagels are my favorite food. <laughs> really? 100%, oh no, no, no question. Oh my gosh, what's the best thing you put on a bagel? Lox. I mean, I, 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 so here's what, I, gotta, I gotta be honest, like I grew up in this like, Bagels on Saturday morning at like Jewish friend's house, like yeah. salmon locks, <laughs> tomato, red onion, yes. like that's about it, you know? So and like when we open the bagel shop, everyone's coming in like, hey, so I want eggs and cheese on mine. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I cracked after like a week and a half. I we, saw some we Instagram. We put a sandwich called I, I Gave In. Yeah. I, I, saw, I, I, gave I, in. I saw it, it and, looked good. Uh, and everyone freaks out about it, so now we make egg sandwiches even though I only eat lox bagels. <laughs> we, try really hard, we try really hard You've to make great food. You've been on Food Network, you've been on MTV. I mean, this guy is, he's the Simon and cowl of, of food is what he is. <laughs> but anyway, so let's try this. What what did you bring me? Number one, what, bring? what is it? Um, what? So, I, I didn't even know there was a word that... that, that so basically, <laughs> in, uh, in January, uh, I tried panettone for the very first time. I tasted Ooh. one. And uh, ever since then, you know, I kind of have this rule that if I taste something that's really delicious, I have to figure out how to make it. Right, yeah. Now, panettone has this uh, reputation for being the Mount Everest of baking challenges. Really? So it's a 48-hour experience to make. It and it takes it requires a completely different sourdough starter. So people who at home go, oh, I make sourdough bread. I use a liquid starter. It's not that. This is like a. It's called a 50% starter of pasta madre. Yeah, so Whoa. look, you got these beautiful, beautiful clusters of the chocolate and caramel and peanut butter inside. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and Crazy. pearl and pearl sugar. And pearl so sugar. Like really what is nice pearl little. sugar? It's from Belgium. Ah. Uh. What do you think, Lori? Thank you so much. <laughs> is it good? So oh, I'm, she's already breaking the cherry, man. Yeah. So that's oh, mmm. Right. we diving in? Wow. Yes. You can have some too. Can you have some? Oh my god. We so this is, it doesn't even eat like bread, right? It's mm. like, it's more like a dessert. This is, this is amazing. I've never tasted any bread like this. To get to the point where we could, we could, you know, know we were going to make a yeah. batch, it was going to be successful, it took about five months. Jesus. Oh my gosh. Incredible, dude. Yeah. It's, it's so good. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor. A ton of baby snakes right here in this playlist. Hit a couple of those videos if you don't mind. On this side, you can hit that subscription button. That would mean a lot to me as well. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow.